Eileen Goodman has a beautiful show of watercolors at Gross McLeaf Gallery. She is of a generation of talented realist artists who arose in the 1960s. She's also one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Eileen, I understand you went to Philadelphia College of Art, which is now called University of the Arts, back in the late 1950s. Did you major in fine art? Hi, John. No, PCA had no fine arts major yet, but there were a lot of studio classes of painting, drawing, printmaking, lectures on art history. I learned so much in those years where before I knew almost nothing. What was the faculty like? We had great teachers in those classes, like Larry Day, Morris Bird, Jane Piper, Jerry Kaplan, all fine artists, and teachers in illustration like Jacob Landau, who was both fine artist and commercial at times. With the skills you were developing, did you consider a career in illustration? I always loved drawing, always did it, and I did do illustration for a while, for a few years before concentrating on fine art. In those years, I began to do watercolors of similar objects as the oils. So for a long time, you did both oil paintings and watercolors. In the late 80s, it became only watercolor. What made you break with oil painting? I felt I was getting at something I wanted without having to smell turpentine. They grew larger, many at 40 by 60, and some diptychs too. For those of you who don't paint, here's a little technical info. Oil paint is extremely forgiving. If you screw something up, you just scrape it off or let it dry and paint over it. Watercolor, on the other hand, has a low tolerance for bumblers. A great watercolorist walks the tightrope without a net. So I wondered what the attraction was for Eileen. I like the accidents of watercolor, the surprises, the pleasures of how it feels working on Darsh's watercolor paper, along with control. They're always transparent, even when dark. There's no white or opaque paint. Which means the lights in a watercolor are either the bare paper showing through or very diluted pigment. The shadows are built up in a series of transparent washes. And Eileen, you are famous for your shadows. They embed a mystery into your works. For me, your paintings combine beauty with a tinge of melancholy an irresistible combination that I also see in Watteau and Bonnard. Your dessert painting is a great example. Strawberry shortcake, at first glance, it's just attractive, bright commercial bakery items, just subject matter, but beauty or mystery can be in anything, from the most commonplace to the most alluring. How something is painted, the surface, the light, the color, the drawing, the shadows. That's the other side of it, the most important side. Shadows define form, objects emerge and dissolve, and whatever sensations, feelings, emotion, or of the passage of time seem to be felt after the painting is completed. It's not consciously planned.
Having painted for over 60 years, have you finally cracked the mysteries of life and art? No, I haven't solved anything about life and art as I've gotten older. I just have more questions. Be that as it may, viewers can see the beauty of those unanswered questions in Eileen Goodman's Extraordinary Watercolors at Gross McLeaf Gallery through April 29th, 2023. Thanks, John. It was my pleasure, Eileen.